Hi right, folks. If there's one thing you could say about the 8-bit era of home computer games, it's that games where you take the fight to the enemy and blast your way to victory are easily a dime a dozen. Blasting aliens, navigating gigantic alien depth fortresses, slamming down that fire button. All of which make for satisfying experiences, but it's said the variety is the spice of life. And sometimes one is really just in the mood for a game which involves a spot of rescuing over the frantic destruction of many, many pixelated aliens. And what can be more exciting than a dangerous rescue mission? Doing it in space. Enter Intensity. Programmed by Andrew Brebrook for Graph Gold and published by Firebird in late 1988, you'll find yourself taking charge with the rescue mission on the Canis Major mining station. The station has fallen prey to an alien infestation, and with the superstructure being slowly eaten away, a survival plan had to be formed in order to give the surviving colonists a chance to get out before the station collapses in on itself. Which is where you enter the picture. You'll be in charge of the skimmer, a remote-controlled mining vehicle which you'll use to relay landing site positions to the automated drone craft, which will fly to said site and attempt to load fleeing colonists up. Using these two vehicles, your task is to rescue as many of the colonists as you can, making your way across the station to the waiting escape shuttles. Before things get underway though, the atmosphere is slowly painted, well at least with the 64 original, with its loading sequence. More than just a static picture, an entire animated sequence is run here, introducing everything you'll encounter, starting with your skimmer and drone, then proceeding through the colonists you need to rescue, as well as the enemies you'll encounter. Finally, there's a refresher, both of the game's objectives, as well as the gameplay, to round it all out. This really makes for a rare case where the 64 cassette version is better than its disc sibling, simply because accessing this for the disc version is only possible for a boot menu. Along with its C64 release, Intensity also appeared on the ZX Spectrum. And the loading sequence doesn't fare as well here. As the rapid fire screeching of bleep load is joined with a reproduction of the cover art, meaning no mission briefing here to get you prepared for what's ahead. Typically, what is shown is more than just dandy for the vast majority of games on the Spectrum. Here though, it's one of the few occasions where I think it detracts from that pre-game atmosphere. By including this sequence as the C64 version's loader, you really get drawn right into the game. It makes you feel like you're part of a dangerous operation, receiving your briefing as you're being taken to the disaster site. With the load complete, you'll first be presented with the customary attract mode. Though not aiming for an arcade audience, the inclusion of it here certainly makes for a visual treat. Cycling through the title page, high score table, along with an in-game demo. Despite intensity being more of an action puzzler than a traditional arcade game, this is still quite effective to draw the player in, especially with the CS4 original, as its title theme playing continuously and its Atari-esque rainbow text effects making the visuals that bit more dynamic in my eyes. Getting into the game itself, you pilot the skimmer using the joystick or optionally keyboard controls if you're playing the Spectrum version. Pressing and holding down the fire button issues a move command to the drone. Having it take off, move to the skimmer's position and then land. At which point you'll need to move the skimmer out of the way or you'll get quite the explosion as the skimmer and drone suffer a fatal collision. This will cost you one of each, and things will only get worse considering what it takes to replace them both. 
It's also worth adding that you'll lose either one if they happen to collide with any of the platform's surface structures. Which ones of these are fatal? That depends on which class of drone and skimmer you are presently using out in the field. So the aim of the game really is careful navigation and planning to safely move your drone to its destination. And puzzling this out on the fly really makes a unique challenge, especially as you move further onto the later platforms. Whilst simply resting the drone in a single location may make for an easy strategy early on, the later platforms make things far tougher with their multiple sections. Rescuing enough colonists on those platforms requires some well-timed drone placement to be in the right place at the right time. The tension here is further compounded by colonists being able to survive only a limited time once they're on the surface. Fail to nab them in time and they'll perish. Outside of the challenges offered up by each of the platforms, there's also the wider meta game to deal with. Making your way to the escape shuttles isn't quite the straightforward sequence you'd expect from your regular old arcade game. The Canis Major Station is constructed of five layers. These have about 15 platforms each, and you'll start from the third of these layers, which represents the default starting level of difficulty. On completing one of the platforms, you'll see the progress map. This shows you which platforms have been cleared, along with the one you'll be tackling next. How you move across the station is defined by how many colonists you rescue in each stage. Once you've rescued the minimum number, the exit portal opens up. Entering the exit at this point moves you down to the next easiest layer. Rescue more colonists, and the exit will now take you to the next toughest layer. Rescuing the full complement on a platform, and you'll proceed to the next platform on your current layer, which means one platform closer to those escape shuttles and freedom. Whilst at first glance, understanding how this progression works is tricky, uh, something not helped by your progress only being shown once you've completed a platform. Though, as you become more familiar with the game, it will be possible to plan out a route which works best for you and your particular playstyle. Whether that is choosing to tackle tougher layers to earn more points, or perhaps to take the easy route and have a better chance of survival, especially as you need the shuttle pads towards the end of the station. You're probably thinking intensity is a bit of a doddle, am I right? Time your drone placement, get enough colonists to keep to the current path, but no, gosh no. Because remember those invading aliens? The ones that started the whole sorry mess off? They're right on your heels. But what poses a bigger threat is their capability to evolve, resulting in them becoming even more devious as your mission progresses. They initially start out as spores, searching for a landing site or fizzling out if unable to locate one. At this stage, ramming them with the drone or skimmer can take them out. If one does make it to ground, they'll mutate into a stalker. Stalkers will pounce about the platform, damaging sections in the process whilst they hunt down roaming colonists. Stalkers can also choose to evolve into the podule form. When in this form, they'll remain dormant while they mutate into the final and most deadly form, the tracker. The tracker won't be pursuing colonists, but rather goes after your drone or skimmer in order to take them out and protect the wider alien population. Early on, the aliens have a fairly slow rate of mutation with the aliens having a fairly restricted level of movement. Progressing through the station, and as time passes, they'll begin to mutate faster, along with learning how to overcome more of the surface obstacles on a given platform. In general, becoming way more of a nuisance, contributing to an increase in the intensity of the action. 
a colonist can be considered rescued once it's made its way successfully to the drone. As a reward, a resource token gets spawned from the platform's exit pad. These aren't just for bonus points, but are your primary source of income, which you'll need to commission extra skimmers and drones. Both come in three separate classes. Alpha, Beta, and Gamma. At the start of the game, you'll be outfitted with three Beta class skimmers, along with three Beta class drones. The Gamma class units are cheaper to order, but they're also slower and can't travel as high over obstacles. Conversely, Alphas are pricier, but their improved speed and cruising height makes for more efficient rescue runs, reducing the need for the drone to be precisely routed to a pickup point in multiple steps. Constructing these is easy. Between completing each platform, you will have the opportunity to buy new drones and skimmers using the resource units you've accumulated. In a way, much like with Morpheus, these won't be available instantly. Depending on what you've ordered, these will take between one to three segments, depending on their class to be delivered and made available for use. So segments, you ask? Yeah, they're about 45 seconds in length. Again, like in Morpheus, they serve to show you your elapsed progression in the game. It's worth noting the opening attack is where the clock starts ticking. And so, your rescue mission begins at segment two. This also enforces a deadline in your mission. Once you reach segment 50, you'll be unable to commission new skimmers and drones. And really, if you happen to be finding your way across the station at this point, the mission is probably doomed. Visually, you can tell that this is a 64 game as the lead. It's a game that makes great use of the colour, character and sprite capabilities of the machine. Braybrook's love of bass relief gets used well here, and some handy colour planning means you can clearly see what is and isn't a hostile obstacle without too much hassle. On the spectrum, it's really going to be a tough one to bear. With levels being confined to a single screen, this allows for the introduction of colour flourishes on each of them, removing the classic monochromatic approach used in many other Spectrum titles. For me though, the real downside is the decision to go with bas relief styling. Whilst I greatly appreciate the need for visual consistency with the C64 original, the Spectrum's colour limitations means it impacts on clarity and as the intensity ramps up, it does make for moments where elements can become lost amongst the chaos. Now this one might be considered fairly minor, but the occasional hints of slowdown don't help here at all, especially when it causes you to miss a critical moment, resulting in a skimmer drone crash or losing one of those poor, poor colonists. Sound-wise with the C64, it's got some solid effects in-game, all containing that classic graph gold touch. It has to be said that for me at least, the absolute standout though is the rocking title theme by Steve Turner. I kind of wish it was expanded upon and even used in the game itself, but that's kind of just some personal nitpicking. Unsurprisingly, this far out class is what you're going to get on the spectrum. Being targeted towards the 48k machines means the audio is restricted to the limited capabilities of the beeper, resulting in simple sound effects and a serviceable attempt at recreating the C64's title theme. Now nothing's perfect and really I think I have one nitpick with the design and it's probably around the clarity of obstacle heights. Whilst the C64's visuals make it easy to discern what is and isn't an obstacle, determining which of them you can and cannot safely fly over is another story. Part of this may be down to the C64's colour limitations 
in the number of colors which can be used on screen at once, but some tweaking here with the object designs could have been something that I think would rather help explain the need for drone upgrades and how important they are later on in the game. Overall, I genuinely dig intensity. I may not have encountered it as a kid, but that's given me the opportunity to spend more time to get to grips with it. As whilst it may lack the immediacy one may find in the likes of Braybrook's other works like Iridium or Alicat, I really find the challenge of juggling your drones and skimmers to be really unique, especially in the landscape of original games of 1988, an era where 16-bit home computers finally started to gain ground, along with the market shifting towards arcade conversions and TV and movie tie-ins over original concepts, resulting in those starting to fall by the wayside. Now, for me personally, this is really a shame. The special conversion happens to be an admirable attempt at the game, but I think you really need to be forgiving of its visual style more than anything if you're going to get enjoyment out of it. The C64 original, alternatively, is one title I find to be truly underrated. As someone who enjoys titles which can offer something a bit more below the surface, intensity is one which fits like a glove, at least for me. Hopefully, this video has convinced you to give it a chance as well. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a thumbs up. It really helps the system do its thing. If you have tried it, let me know what you think. And if you're going to, give the shot to let me know as well. It's always a great thing to hear from viewers and see what they think of the games I pick out. You know, I always find these kind of experiences to be the ones well worth doing so. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all next time.